Hello and welcome to church for June 14th, 2020. Thankful to be able to worship together this morning. I know that, that these continue to be very difficult days, but I'm thankful for the privilege that we have of gathering around God's Word, even as we gather in our homes, to call on God for His help in these difficult times. A couple of announcements as we get started this morning. First of all, our on-site services continue to be canceled. Um, the end of June is what we're looking at, so a couple of weeks out as the earliest possible coming back into the building. Um, and we're going to be sending out a survey this week that's going to ask you some questions, uh, try to gauge where we're at as a congregation. One of the challenges that we face in our facility is that even though we can seat nearly 200 people on normal circumstances, with social distancing, we're limited to between 30 and 50 people in our sanctuary, depending on the size of the family units and how many people are coming together. So what we're looking at is the possibility of establishing at least two services, if not three. And so we need to know who's wanting to come and when would you be coming to make sure that we have enough seats for everyone so that we can properly social distance. So the details of that will be spelled out in the the letter that's coming uh, later this week. And uh, please be on the, on the lookout for that. It'll either come, I'll put it on Facebook. Um, and if you don't have Facebook, I'll try to put it either in an email or in a, mail, a letter form for you. Until we resume, we will meet on Facebook or YouTube or the church website or the church app at 1030 on Sunday mornings and Wednesday night at, five, at 6 p.m. on Facebook Live. During this time, uh, the bills of the church do continue to come in, so if you're able to give to help with those needs, uh, online giving is available on our website or on the church app, or you can text to give. Uh, the number is 563-334-0110. and text the word GIVE with an amount, and it will walk you through the process of making a donation. Or you can give uh, by mailing a check to the church. We do check the mail every day. Also during this time, I do spend time praying every day for the needs of, of us as a congregation, but us as individuals. So if you have a specific request that you would like me to pray for, feel free to send that to me through the church app or email or phone call or text, and know that I will be praying for you during this time. And also we will follow this video uh, with a time of pre-recorded music so that we can worship together tonight. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning very much in need of you, very much in need of, of your hand in our lives and your hand in our world. God, we are continuing to see the unrest stretch across our nation, and we are continuing to struggle with the, the realities of this virus as it starts to surge back up again. We continue to experience the the political division and the, the financial difficulties that we have been wrestling with for the last month. And Father, we just ask for your help in all of this. Help us to make the right choices individually and help us to make the right choices as a nation and as a people. Father, I pray for your wisdom. I pray for your discernment. And I pray that you would guide us. I pray also, God, that you would speak to each one of us this morning the message that we need to hear. Wherever we're at, whatever we're dealing with, whatever we're facing, would you speak to each one of us the message we need to hear? In Jesus' name, amen. Well, as we come to our sermon this morning, I want to let you know that I really have wrestled hard with the message for this week. This is the second sermon that I've written, and it's the third sermon that I've preached and recorded uh, I preached earlier today on uh, 2 Corinthians, kind of continuing our journey through 2 Corinthians. And after I recorded that message, I really did not feel peaceful. I really felt checked that that was not the message that we needed to hear right now. So I took more time in prayer and felt led to, to go in a different direction. So I know we've been in 2 Corinthians, and I know that there's a lot in 2 Corinthians that speaks to us. But today I felt like we needed to hear something different. Rather than 2 Corinthians, I felt like we needed to hear a message out of Matthew that speaks clearly to where we're at at this time in our culture. Matthew 11 is where we're going to settle today, and Matthew 11 falls in the middle of Jesus' ministry. And in the middle of Jesus' ministry, there's still that, that excitement. Everybody's really excited for the Messiah to come. 
they've been waiting for about 400 years at the time of Jesus' birth since the last prophet of God spoke a message to them. And they've been anticipating for 400 years what it was going to be like when the Messiah came. They had all kinds of expectations. A lot of prophecies were written that, that really made this seem like it was going to be the most amazing time ever. And yet, there are a lot of things that Jesus came and the way that He came that did not meet their expectations. And the crowds made it very clear that they were anticipating the Messiah, they were excited about a Messiah as long as He came in their way. Matthew 11 starts with a message from John the Baptist. Now, John the Baptist was a cousin of Jesus. His mother was pregnant just ahead of Jesus, and his birth was miraculous. His parents were well beyond the age of giving birth when John's father, Zechariah, went into the temple to offer a sacrifice because he was a priest. And an angel spoke to him and said, your wife is going to have a child. And Zechariah said, how can that happen? I'm, we're too old. And the angel said, because you are not believing, I will give you a sign. I'm going to shut your mouth, <laughs> for lack of a better way of saying it, until the baby is born, you will not be able to speak another word. And I've often joked that there very, that very well could have been a gift to Elizabeth, because Zechariah, um, he, he didn't know how to keep his mouth shut, as evidenced by that statement. And it's very likely that, uh, that he would have made Elizabeth's pregnancy really miserable if he were able to talk. And so the, the angel of the Lord gave a gift to Elizabeth and shut his mouth for the entirety of the pregnancy. But John the Baptist, who was the predecessor, uh, who the scriptures foretold was the one who was to prepare the way for Jesus, sent Jesus a message that really wasn't a good message. The message said, are you the Messiah we have been expecting, or should we wait for someone else? In other words, John the Baptist was questioning whether Jesus Christ was really the Messiah, or whether they were supposed to be looking for somebody else, because Jesus was not doing things the way that John wanted him to. Now I want to point out that John's Gospel tells us that John the Baptist was the first one to identify that Jesus was the Messiah. And when he did so, two of his disciples, Andrew, the brother of Peter, and John, the author of the, the Gospel of John, immediately went and followed Jesus instead of following John the Baptist. And so G John the Baptist was the first to identify that Jesus was the Messiah, but because Jesus was not coming as a military leader as John expected, he sent this message to Jesus saying, are you the Messiah? Or should we wait for somebody else? Now, quite honestly, that was a gut punch. That was just really a low blow to Jesus for John to say, you're not doing things right. Jesus responds to this message to John's disciples to take back to John the Baptist and tells them to go and tell John what you've seen. There's a lot in that, and I won't go there this morning. But then he turns to the crowds who also heard this gut punch and talked to them about who John the Baptist was and talked about how great he was and yet that in the kingdom of God that the first shall be last, the last shall be first. That, that he was a great person, but yet he's not the greatest. And in this, the context of John the Baptist, Jesus addresses the impossible crowds. Now, crowds followed Jesus wherever he went. He accused them at times of just wanting a meal. Uh, sometimes they were desperately wanting to be healed. Sometimes they were just looking for entertainment, looking for a show. But Jesus addresses the crowds. He said, you accuse John the Baptist of being demon-possessed because he wouldn't eat and drink with you. But yet when I, the Son of Man, came and I did eat and drink with you, you called me a glutton and a drunkard. He's addressing the fact that, that you can't please crowds. When you've got problems on a crowd level, it's impossible to solve them. Jesus knows that crowds are impossible to please because they always come up with more expectations when there's a big group of people than they do in a one-on-one -on -one setting. So Jesus chooses to make things personal with a personal invitation. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to Matthew chapter 11, 
starting with verse 28. Then Jesus said to them, Come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you, because I am humble and gentle at heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear, and the burden that I give you is light. This is a personal invitation that Jesus extends. And I want us to just pay attention to to the words and the phrases of this invitation. First of all, Jesus says to the crowds, come to me. Now he's not saying all y'all come. He's saying it in a personal way, not addressing the crowds, addressing them as individuals. Come to me, all who are weary, everybody who's exhausted, everyone who carries heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Now, I'll be honest with you, as I'm recording this video tonight in anticipation for, and Saturday night, anticipation for Sunday morning, I think we all fit this, we're weary and we have, we have heavy burdens. I've talked to a number of you this week about different situations that you're facing, and I know that we as a congregation, we as individuals within this congregation are facing heavy burdens. We're, we're carrying difficult situations. And we're weary, we're worn out, we're exhausted. Jesus continues with the invitation to take his yoke upon him, upon us, and let him teach us, because he is humble and gentle at heart, and we will find rest for our souls. He says, My yoke is easy to bear, and the burden that I give you is light. Now, the yoke that Jesus is referring to is the yoke that would attach to two animals that would be used in, a, in an agricultural setting. So, in the days before tractors, uh, they would yoke two oxen together, or two horses together, or two donkeys together, or two mules together, and they would pull together in order to accomplish something that could not be accomplished with the strength of one. So whether it be plowing, whether it would be pulling a cart, whether it would be pulling a a wagon, they would would yoke these two animals together and the yoke would fit over, it was a bar that would fit over the necks of both animals and then there was a, a ring that would come around their necks. Now there's a legend that's told about Jesus that as a carpenter his specialty was yokes. Now we can't verify that, but it's an interesting legend because the legend tells us that Jesus not only made yokes, but that the farmers came from far and wide to buy his yokes because the way that they perfectly fit the animals that he was making them for. And the animals were much more productive because the yokes were not cutting into their necks, but the yokes fit easy, the the yokes fit light, and the animals were able to work harder because of the fit of the yoke. I think that's very powerful for us in context of this passage to recognize that Jesus knows us as individuals. And when he says that my yoke is easy to bear and the burden that I give you is light, he's inviting us to come and to be yoked with him. Catch that. With him. Because he knows how perfectly to fit what we need to do in this life to us. Come to me, he says. On the opposite side of Jesus' invitation to come is the reality that that there are many voices going at the people, telling them what they're to do. In Jesus' day, there was the voice of the Pharisees which told the people constantly, you're not doing things good enough. You need to do things better. The voice said that that you're not following the law right. You need to do this better. And then there was the voice of the Sadducees. The Sadducees was another political party in the day of Jesus that said, you're making this too hard. You should just give in and do what the Romans want us to do. You should just give in to our oppressors and, and, and make them happy so that we can all just get along. And then there was the voice of the Essenes. The Essenes were a desert people 
who were, had, had withdrawn completely from the Jewish culture because they felt like they were just too sinful. They weren't doing things the right way. There were so many voices aimed at the Jewish people. All of these voices claiming to have a, a perspective from God. And it was hard for the people to discern between those voices. Now, we're living in very tumultuous times. June of 2020, the whole of 2020, will go down in infamy as one of the most difficult years ever. And we are hearing many voices telling us what to do in a variety of areas. We have voices telling us what to do politically. We have voices telling us what to do financially. We have voices telling us what to do medically. We have voices telling us what to do to ease racial tensions around the, the country. We have voices telling us what to do in so many different areas. We hear these voices and they're all coming at us at once in addition to other voices that we may hear. Voices with, with ex relationships with extended family or voices with relationships with our job or voices with... with um, with, with uh, spouse relationships or voices with children relationships. All of these voices are coming at us. All of these voices are, are give, putting heavy weights on us, heavy burdens on us. And each voice that we're hearing is weighing us down more and more and more. Some of these voices are absolutely demanding. And they're telling us that we need to carry more burdens that we're not doing this right, that we need to carry more burdens. But Jesus says, come to me and I will give you rest. Do you see the contrast between the message that Jesus is giving and the voices that the world is sending? The voices of the world are demanding more and more of us and Jesus is saying, come to me and I will give you rest. A lot of the voices that we see and that we hear are arrogant voices telling us that there's only one way to do things in a situation where we know that there are multiple ways to do something. And these arrogant voices come at us and tell us that we have to do things their way. And in contrast, Jesus says, I am humble and gentle at heart. Do you see the irony that Jesus is the only one who really does know the best way? And yet he's not the one that comes and tells us we have to do it his way, everything his way. He comes to us and says, let me teach you because I am humble and gentle at heart. And then there's confusing voices. Voices saying, do this, no, do this, no, do that. And then coming back and saying, no, don't do this, and don't do that, and don't do this. Especially in the health realm right now, it is so hard to keep track of what we are and aren't supposed to be doing, especially as we try to open church back up. Trying to understand, okay, what things can we do and what things can't we do? What things are, are putting us at risk and what things aren't putting us at risk? We're hearing these confusing voices over and over and over and Jesus says to the confusion, come and learn from me. Now, I want to make sure that you understand. When I say that Jesus calls us to come to him, this is not an excuse for inaction. When we say that Jesus is calling us to come to him, that's not a reason for us to say that we're going to ignore everything going on around us. And we're just going to focus on Jesus? That's not what this is saying. What Jesus is saying here is that as we come to Him, we are yoked with Him, and together we can be equipped to be more effective than we can be on our own. He will teach us what we're to do. He'll help us to discern which voices we need to listen to. He'll help us to understand how to do the things that need to be done in the world around us. He will guide us as we stay yoked to Him. And we can accomplish much more than we could ever dream of accomplishing on our own. 
because it's his plan not our plan his plan i want to remind us as we wrap up our time together this morning of jesus invitation where jesus says come to me all who are weary all who carry heavy burdens i will give you rest Jesus says, take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you, for I am humble and gentle at heart, and you will find rest for your souls. My yoke is easy to bear. The burden that I give you is light. Jesus tells us to come to him. I know that each one of us have burdens that we're carrying. I know that each one of us have situations that we're facing where we're just feeling like we can't handle this on our own. And Jesus' invitation is to not throw our voice in with the crowd, yelling for more and more and more. But our invitation is to come to Him. That He will shape us, that He will teach us, that He will help us to accomplish what needs to be accomplished without taking on more than we're able to handle. Let's pray together as we close. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, know that I'm praying for you as we continue through these difficult days. And my prayer for us is that we together as a church would come to Jesus. We would answer his invitation to come and to find rest in him. May God bless you.